Hello everyone and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam aka Hemvar and today I just wanted to do a quick video on a well on a genre overview for the diner. Okay, so this is basically for those people who don't know what Dying Earth is. Now, this is not a super popular genre. It is a science fiction genre, it, or science fantasy is generally kind of the case. Uh, but science fiction, if you want to put it broadly. Um, I just wanted to go over a little bit about what it is. This should go really quick because there's not a lot to say about it. I mean, I have done a previous video on like what is sword and sorcery, and I made it really short and it came out to about seven minutes and I could have gone a lot more in depth and made it hours long probably if I really wanted to. But there's a lot less intricacies going on here because this is really just more of a setting. Uh, that's really all dying earth means. And so again it's science fiction, often science fantasy, and it is basically a setting that is the end of life on earth or just the end of time in general. Um, so it deals a lot with like world weariness, uh, and I guess the thing that distinguishes it from like apocalyptic settings or post-apocalyptic is it wasn't some big terrible thing that happened. It's just death through entropy, just death through time, you know, just the natural decay. So that's, that's basically what's going on here. Uh, it's rather melancholy because of that often, or even nihilistic <laughs> in some cases. Uh, so, but yeah, again, not catastrophic destruction, but entropic destru destruction. So very interesting. I'm, I'm going to go over examples, though. I hear some people will say that, like, the first stories of this are by William Hope Hodgson, who wrote books like The Nightland or The House on the Borderland. Uh, there's an even older book in the 18th or 19th century. I don't remember who it's by. It's by some French author, but it's called uh, Le Dernier Homme, or Le Dernier Homme, uh, which just means last man. <laughs> so, I mean, like, uh, the books I wanted to go over real quick... Um, I guess the name of the genre comes from Jack Vance's Dying Earth. This is the omnibus you can basically get these days. There's only four of these, I have four novels in it, so and they're rather short. I don't have them, they're kind of hard to find actually, which is a big sad to someone who likes to collect like I do. Uh, so there are four in here. The first one is called The Diner. That's what the genre is named after, uh, which is to say that it's been rather influential. Um, but that's his, the idea isn't original to Jack Vance. Um, he was kind of, well, he gave a name to it, right? So, I mean, some H.P. Lovecraft short stories are basically Dying Earth settings. There's other ones as well. The ones that are more important, I feel like, to mention are Zothic by Clark Ashton Smith. This is not a Zothic, a Zothic uh, collection, because those are actually hard to come by. There's one in the 70s, I think, um, by Lynn Carter, I believe, or maybe it was Elspar uh, Camp. I'm not quite sure, but this is actually the world Zothic, is the world uh, Jack Vance based his Dying Earth setting off of. Uh, Clark Ashton Smith does a lot of settings, so Zothic is just one of a few. Uh, and this one, this is the Penguin Classics version of Clark Ashton Smith, and she's, look, he's made it, guys, because he's got a Penguin Classic version. Um, but uh, the name of this one is actually The Dark Eidolon and Other Fantasies, and The Dark Eidolon is actually the big Zothic story in here, and I just want to read, like, the first sentence in here. And it is on Zothic, the last continent of Earth. The sun no longer shone with the whiteness of its prime, but was dim and tarnished as if with a vapor of blood. So, from that first sentence, you know it, the sun is dying. <laughs> so, uh, even another older one than Vance, because Vance's Diners came out, I think either in 50 or 51, I should have looked that up, but I didn't, um, is Air of Rule by Fritz Leiber. I just can't get away with not mentioning Fritz Leiber. So this is a chapbook from the 80s, so this is not a very popular one. But this tells the story about the last being on Earth, not actually human. Um, it's actually very interesting. This is actually, in some ways, the dead Earth. <laughs> not a dying Earth. It's already dead, but it, it isn't because there's one person left on it still. Um, but it's definitely not the end of time. That's actually a point in the story, is that like, when everything dies on Earth, it's still not the end of time, essentially. That is the big point, at least. I would say the more popular, I would say, series, definitely a cl like cult classic, would be Gene Wolfe's Book of the New Sun. Um, very Vancean in world. Uh, Storytelling is not quite Vancean. Uh, in, in a lot of ways, Wolfe's is just better. Um, it's definitely different, though. So while Jack Vance is not for everyone, neither is Gene Wolfe, obviously. But his Book of the New Sun, this, made my, this was my favorite book of 2021, for those curious. So uh, there are four books in this. Uh, the Call of the Conciliator, um, the Sword of the Lictor, and the Sword of the Autarch are the other ones. 
There is a coda as well as the Earth of the New Sun. So those are all dying Earth settings <laughs> of a sort. Uh, Earth of the New Sun's a little different as far as the dying Earth part goes. Um, but I won't spoil that. Um, and so those are the more popular ones, I would say. There are other ones, just like other ones I can mention, that I cannot confirm nor deny, really, if these are Dying Earth. I've heard people mention them as Dying Earth. Um, I don't know if they really fit it, how well they fit it, because I haven't read them. But we have The City of the Stars by Arthur C. Clarke. Um, we have Viraconium by M. John Harrison, The Book of Ptoth by A.E. Van Vogt. I don't know, King Barnum by Alan Grant, The Shattered Goddess by Daryl Schweltzer, Dark as the Sun by Philip Jose Farmer, um, As the Curtain Falls by Kurt, or Robert Chilson, rather, Hot House by Brian Aldiss, Arconate by Matthew Hughes, Awake in the Nightland by John C. Wright, which sounds like, interesting, anyways, um, <laughs> sounds like The Nightland by William Hope Hod Hodgson, I wonder if that one's directly influenced, and then The Wanderer by Timothy J. Jarvis, um, Again, I don't really have much to say on that. The other one I would like to mention that I've literally never, ever seen anyone mention this as a Dying Earth book. I feel like, I hope I'm not the first person to make this connection, and I probably am not, but I'm the first person who I've seen to make the connection. I, I mentioned it even on Twitter to the author, and he liked it. He didn't respond to me, um, but other people seem to agree with me. That is Book of the Ancestor by Mark Lawrence. Uh, I wanted to mention him because he's actually like a contemporary author, Everyone else I've mentioned has been dead or done writing for decades for the most part, um, if not longer. And uh, Mark Lawrence still writes. Uh, this is definitely not his most famous series. It's the only one I've read, actually. And there's a sequel series called Book of the Ice. Uh, but this is definitely a dying Earth setting. Uh, for those unaware, it is on a planet that has an artificial moon, and that moon goes around warming the encroaching ice caps. But it is failing, essentially. The, the ice caps keep on getting closer and closer, so there's only like a tiny corridor uh, at the equator of this planet. So definitely Dying Earth, uh, definitely has that melancholy feel as well. So um, for those curious, I guess, for a more modern uh, look, it definitely has some different takes because it is a lot more modern in different ways. So, um, but I hope this video helps somewhat. Um, if you have an idea what Dying Earth is, tell me what some of your favorite Dying Earth books are. Uh, I've been slowly going through more as I read. So uh, if you want to experience that journey, you can subscribe here and follow my reviews and just other things. So anyways, it's been Liam with Liam's Lyceum. I'll catch you next time.